Let's start things off on the right foot here. KDE Neon is not a Linux distribution. It's not, it even says right on the website. Actually, it says that KDE isn't quite a Linux distribution. But to understand exactly what they mean, you have to understand what the KDE project is and how Neon fits into the whole project portfolio, as it were. And if you were expecting me to explain that right here, right now, I am happy to disappoint you because you will have to wait until the end of the episode. So this short little segment is always dedicated to the glorious installer, which is in this case, Calamares. Now I've seen a number of reports from people saying that the Neon installer had issues or basically like crashed midway through the install. I didn't have any issues with mine, but maybe it was a bug that they fixed or something because it, it was fine. Anyway, you've seen this very installer at least a dozen times on other distros, so let's just move on to the desktop. KDE is a little bit known for its login and splash screen, but it's actually there to help you sort of like warm things up as you make your way to the desktop so that it doesn't feel all sluggish right after logging in like some desktops do. Weirdly though, KDE doesn't have an official welcome app. And to be honest, this feels like a really strange oversight. Like how can KDE be as old as it is and not have a welcome app of some sort? There's lots of documentation. Like if you press F1, you get like a manual and stuff, but there's no welcome app. Now in the way of resource usage, KDE Neon here weighs in at about 8.1 gigabytes for a fresh install and free is reporting 647 megabytes of memory used. HTOP was not installed by default, which is a little odd, but once we get it running, we see 80 tasks and about 118 threads. So this is KDE Neon 5.19. It's hardly an exciting release, and in fact, most of this release consisted of bug fixes and general improvements, which you really can't see. Something I've not really talked about in regards to KDE is the plasmoids, and what better time to talk about them than with an episode about Neon. If you remember Windows Vista, it had like gadgets and clocks and sticky notes and weather updates and stuff that you could place on your desktop. Well, Plasma, Plasmoids rather, are literally those for KDE. The Cinnamon desktop has similar things called Cinnamon Spices, I think, or maybe Desklets, but nothing captures that Windows Vista era feel like Plasmoids do. And I don't mean that in a bad way either. They're quite functional and there's like hundreds of them. You can even download more of them straight from here. Which is a KDE thing, by the way. They call them cool stuff, as in get new cool stuff or download more cool stuff or whatever. But themes are probably the most well known for this. You can download new plasmoids and new themes and even new dolphin services like this too. It's pretty wild and they've had it for a long time. Speaking of theming, I've also never really done a deep dive on theming for KDE either, but don't expect it here. That's a bit too deep for a regular Distro Delves episode. Besides, everyone knows how themable and breakable KDE is. But to be honest, I haven't actually borked my desktop with themes in a pretty long time. I think that KDE used to be much more susceptible to breakage via bad themes and stuff, but not so much anymore. There are lots of bad or downright broken themes, but the breeze theme always just works, the light or dark theme. And if you manage to find yourself with a theme that is completely busted, like the color palette is all messed up or something, you can just revert back to breeze and presto, your desktop is like new again. Something that might surprise you about KDE Neon is how trimmed down it is. Were you expecting lots of bloated KDE apps? Well, you're not gonna find any. They even use Firefox and VLC, both non-KDE apps, which is honestly a little bit odd to me. Considering the KDE project, you'd think that they'd want to showcase KDE apps. KDE has a media player and a browser, like multiple of each actually, so why are we shipping with VLC exactly? And if the answer is, well, VLC works really good, bullshit. If that's the case, fix the damn KDE media player, don't ship a non-KDE app instead. Come on, guys. Mounting media was a bit finicky for some reason. Neon doesn't support EXFAT out of the box, and it didn't want to mount my encrypted internal drive without some serious convincing. Now I've changed the archive and media tests a bit here because I may have accidentally formatted the Brunchmarks SSD. If you really want to know how I managed that, you can read the post over on Patreon about the Neon episode. But each of the archives opened just fine, including that pesky RAR file. Since Neon uses VLC for media, every single one of the media files played back just fine, both audio and video. And I went ahead and switched up the application tests because I want to include more popular apps for testing, and also because why the heck not. 
KDE Neon supports all of the things, snaps, flat packs, app images, and it actually detects app images and offers to install them. That's pretty slick. All of our app images here and the flat packs opened and worked just fine. And speaking of apps, let's talk about Discover. I normally wouldn't devote an entire segment to a specific app, but since KDE Neon isn't a Linux distro, and from the sounds of it, you guys are more interested in KDE the desktop anyways rather than Neon, here we go. Discover is KDE's application center installer thingy. It's a rather strange beast, and it doesn't really share much in common with other application managers like GNOME Software or even Mint Software Manager thing. I mean, it obviously manages updates and lets you install software and stuff, but you can also add additional repos straight from here, submit usage information, and install add-ons for your desktop. You can even install new wallpapers from here, bet you didn't know that. The back end for add-ons and things is KDE Look. It's like a website, so technically any software manager can integrate like this. It's also worth pointing out that Discover is distro agnostic. It's not bound to Neon or Ubuntu or whatever, and technically you can install it on any distro or even any desktop and expect it to just work. That might be a bit of an overstatement, but that's how it should work. Now networking is something that KDE has lagged on for a while now. Neon doesn't actually ship with Samba support out of the box, so if you wanna share a Samba folder on your network or whatever, you have to install an additional package or two. Not sure if this is an oversight or what, but it's a little odd. KDE also doesn't support DLNA media sharing as far as I know. And Dolphin doesn't accept SSH URIs. You gotta use Fish, which is fine if you know that, but if you were expecting to use SSH colon slash slash, Dolphin is gonna tell you, uh-uh, and you'll have to figure it out yourself. That sucks for new users. My printer was detected and installed out of the box, which is fantastic, but Bluetooth was a little troublesome think that my DualShock 4 controller died or is dying because Neon couldn't detect it, but it did find and connect to my Android phone, which is probably a better test anyway, and it just started playing Spotify via Bluetooth, which is fine, I guess, but hey, it worked. An interesting thing about the benchmarks and performance sections of DistroDelve's episode is that it is seemingly impossible for me to compare against baseline distros, like for a while I was comparing against Ubuntu LTS, because the overall performance of gaming on Linux and things, it just keeps getting better, so the test results go out of date really fast. Dirt here is running great, but is that due to Neon, or is that due to a recent Steam update or a driver update or something? Anyway, I think that I'm just going to compare the current distro against the previous distro from now on, so we're looking at Arco Linux, comparing it to Neon, which actually did quite poorly with 45 frames a second versus Arco's 50 frames a second. War Thunder's results showed an even bigger gap with 24 frames a second versus Arco's 30. Neon felt a bit less smooth than Arco, which was running XFCE with a compositor enabled. Kwin should disable compositing when a full screen window is open like this one, but maybe it's not? I don't know. And in a weird and surprising upset, KDE Neon actually got higher frames a second than Arco with 24 frames versus Arco's 21. So KDE is a big project or community of sub-projects. Wright, the text editor, is one such project and Neon is yet another. So in that sense, Neon is a project of project. It's a KDE project that ships lots of other KDE projects. That's why KDE Neon isn't really a Linux distro in the traditional sense. It's a KDE project that ships other KDE projects as something that you can just install and use. It's actually a pretty cool concept, honestly. And as many of you already know, KDE Neon is my current daily driver, but it seems that many people have a weird relationship with their favorite or primary Linux distro or desktop. Am I in love with Neon? No. Does Neon offer the best KDE experience out of the box? No. So then why do I continue to use it? Because it works for me. I don't have to love something top to bottom just to enjoy using it. And what's more, it seems silly to not critique the things that you love. There are things that I love about KDE, sure, but that doesn't mean I'm just going to forgive or ignore the bad things about it. That's just stupid. If you love something, you should want it to constantly improve and get better, or at least not get worse. KDE could absolutely use some improvements, and that's what the KDE community is doing. 5.19 was largely polish and bug fixes. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, that doesn't mean that I'm just going to ignore the problems that it has. 
It shouldn't matter how much you love your favorite Linux distro, you should always be looking for problems, submitting issues, and otherwise helping maintainers make the best software they can. And in the meantime, I'm going to continue to use Neon because it currently fits the needs I have as a user, as a gamer, and as a developer. I hope that you liked this episode of Distro Doves, and if you did, you know what to do. Like, comment, share it with your friends, share it on social media, whatever. And if you want to support me and the channel, you can become a patron and enjoy all the cool stuff I do over on Patreon. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching. I used to think I was unconcerned with life's trivial matters. I don't have the time or interest.